Okay. I have my questions here. Okay. So, do you make a seating chart or allow students to choose their seats? Um, in both my classes, we have assigned seats. Um, <laughs> and why? So I think there's a couple reasons why I do that. One is I like to change seats pretty frequently. Um, I know that you're probably going to ask about this in a bit, but we usually have new seats uh, with each new unit, which varies from you know four to six weeks typically. Um, so I think it's a good way to move students around, um, give them opportunities to sit with different people, work with different groups. Um, and just in my experience, it's it um, I, I like being able to group students in ways that will encourage discussion. Um, when we assign seats, there's a lot more ways that you can do that. Um, when students choose their own seats, they tend to sit with the same people. And so, you know, um, even if it's not an issue with them being too talkative during class, um, it's more concern of they're going to hear the same viewpoints. Um, they're not really going to challenge themselves a lot of the times. Um, and there won't be so much of a classroom culture. It'll just be a really clicky class. Do you believe seating affects um, their, uh, a student's grade? Why or why not? I do think so, um, you know, especially if you're looking at kids being in the front of the classroom, that's, I mean, I'm their only focus, or whatever is up on the board is their only focus. Um, and I also notice the temptation with the kids in the back of the room, that back, that back wall yeah. is very, very tempting for sleepers and for tired Bonavista students. Oh, but some people do need to sit closer, though. But it does, I think for, for some, um, that special, that has difficulty concentrating, maybe it will help them. Okay. But I think for most people, I don't really see the difference. I, I think back to college and things like that, and you know, especially if you're in a larger class and people can come in and sit wherever, people who were there all the time, people who sat up towards the front, generally that signals like, I'm here, I want to participate. Um, and oftentimes those are people who tend to be more involved in a class and do better. So I don't really know, I haven't noticed that in my classes, but I. I could see how that might be the case, but I, I don't. To make it make it clear, like I don't think it's a cause and effect relationship. I don't think moving to the front instantly makes you a better student. I just think that all other things being equal, students that sit in the front might be more likely to be students who just do better anyway. And how do you make the choices of what um, students to call on during class? Um, that's always a, actually a hard one for me um, because you always have those students that are going to have their hands up all the time. And I know that if I call on them too much, then everybody else knows they don't have to answer and they can just relax and that those, they can rely on the other students to answer. Um, so um, I'm trying more this year to call on students. I'm not always great at doing that because I know when I was in high school, I was very quiet and I would have been mortified if this teacher picked on me. So um, when I do call on the quieter students, it's uh, sometimes with a, with a question that I know that they're going to be able to um, and then, do you make a seating chart or allow students to pick their seats? I make the seating chart. Uh, why? Um, number one, I think um, it's really important actually for me to make the seating chart. Um, the first semester, because I don't know anyone, I just randomly just grab, pick the seats, so assign seats randomly. but. If I know someone in, in, in the head, in, in the rest, I will have some idea, like, is, can the student focus? If the person can focus, then I'll be, and then also the person is tall enough, and I'll pro probably put the person in the back. Um, if the person needs constant reminder, got, cannot concentrate as much, then I'll put the person in the front. And um, do you tend to walk around and teach, or just stay at the front? I think I move around a lot. Um, you're laughing probably because you can attest to that. I move around <laughs> a lot. I have trouble holding still. Um, but it depends. You know, there's days when we're doing a little bit more lecture-heavy stuff, and I'll spend more time in front of the classroom. Um, but I do try. I do try to rotate around, um, especially when students are working in pairs or writing in journals or things like that. Mm. Um, do you have a reward system for participation? Like, is there a grading for how many times someone actually like participates in class? I have a participation rubric that we do every grading period. It's more of an estimate, though. I don't. It's hard. I've tried, um, 
you know, to, to keep, I know some teachers do tally marks, how many times students are talking, but I find it's hard to keep, to keep up with that and have a good discussion at the same, at the same time. And how does your seating layout of the classroom get decided? Like, how do you decide how to arrange your desks? That's a really good question. Um, the two classes I teach have very different layouts um, for, for very different reasons. Um, in myth, we have kind of a traditional squarish classroom. Um, and what I decided to do here uh, last year was angle all the desks so they're kind of at like 45, 40, 45 degree angles. Um, the thought was it would allow students to still easily see the board um, or you know the, the screen if we're projecting something, um, but it would encourage them to talk to one another more and maybe less to talk to me. That's that was the idea anyway, um, because everyone's seating sitting in a, in a way that they can see one another um, and see me. Whereas if you're in kind of traditional rows, um, if you're in the front, you literally don't see anyone else <laughs> except for the teacher. So my thought was it was kind of a compromise of a way to allow students to still be comfortable while you're using the front of the room. Um, but to encourage them to talk more with one another. Um, in world studies, students are seated around tables, and so the, the automatic um, drive there is to talk within their groups, and so we have them do a lot of that. Um, they'll you know, share their journal prompts, they'll share their ideas on questions, um, we'll have people report out to the group from the tables, um, a lot of like small group projects and activities and things like that. Uh, do you believe uh, seating affects the grades of a student? For some, for some. but. Um, for, for people that are always responsible and uh, attentive, I don't really see much of a difference. But I do see that sometimes I think this person is responsible and can concentrate and I put the person in the back. I do see that maybe the person would, doesn't perform as well comparing to when he or she got placed closer to me. Uh, it, it could happen though, but um, overall, it, person have good like self-discipline then I don't really see much of a difference and I, I feel that students probably think that for people that sit in the back that teachers don't get to see what they're doing and they're they probably reading instead but for me on the country I can see better for people sitting in the back sometimes maybe people sitting in the front I may be not able to catch the person reading right away, but if you people are doing something in the back, I can tell right away. Because I don't really look down right away, like so closely, because uh, I look around. As, as, as I think that's a misconception. <laughs>